So in tic-tac-toe, we have a three by three grid, and I've created some assets uh, to use for this. And players take turns putting X's and O's on the grid. Um, and if you get a line of three O's or three X's, then you win. Now, when we're thinking about how to write unit tests for this, some things are going to be easier to test than others. And in particular, I think we should start with the logic that determines the board state. I'm going to create a script, and I'm going to call it game state. The new convention, by the way, in Godot 4, stylistically, is to use snake case, a lowercase with underscores in between words, for the names of scripts and scenes. Let's create a class. So we're going to call it class name game state. And we don't actually need this to be a node. I'm going to make it a resource. And a resource is basically a reference that you can save. If we wanted to implement a save game feature for tic-tac-toe, which we probably don't. So now we think of what methods we're going to need to interact with the game state. We want to be able to tell whether the game is over and someone has won. So let's create a function called get winner. And I think we'll just probably represent um, the different players, the X and the O player as strings. We're going to make use of uh, Godot static typing here. So get winner is going to return a string, but for now it's just going to return the empty string. But if one player had won, it would return an X or an O. We can make a note of this. We also want a method uh, that will place an X or an O at a particular location. Place X. I don't think we need to return anything for this because it's just modifying the game state. Actually, Instead of place, placing x, let's say place letter, and then we'll give it um, as arguments a letter and a location, which can be a vector. And that way we can use that to place both the x's and the o's. And we also need to know if a move is legal. If there is a letter at a location already, you can't place another letter there. Is move legal? And then a move can be represented just as a position because we don't actually care whether it's X or O that's doing it, we only care whether that space is full. And then this will return a Boolean, which indicates whether the move is legal. And for now, we'll just return false. You may notice that we haven't actually implemented anything for these. And that's because we're going to write the tests first. So let's create a test. So here's our game state test. By the way, in the test file, any uh, function that it's going to run when it runs its tests has to start with test underscore. So for example, test underscore is move legal. The first thing that we can test is that if I place a letter at a particular location, it should then be illegal to place another letter at that location. Let's call this test placing a letter over another letter should not be legal. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create our game state. Var game state equals game state dot new. We are going to call place letter. So game state dot place letter. We will place an O at position. So our vectors should start at zero zero, and then we should have zero one zero two, and then one zero one 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 two, and so forth. Um, but with zero being the origin. So We'll say, we'll place a letter at the zero position. Oh, uh, it needs to be vector two. So that would be the upper left corner of the grid. And then we will say game state dot is move legal to two dot zero. Um, so we're going to assert that this is a Boolean. So assert Boolean uh, game state is move legal vector two dot zero is false. And let, let's just have one more test before we run this, placing a letter in an empty space should be legal. So if we instantiate a new game state and we ask, is it legal to, to place a letter at uh, zero, zero, that should be true. All right, we've got these two tests. So what do you think is gonna happen when we run these? Okay, so the second test actually passed. The first test failed. I was expecting true, but it is false. Right now, is move legal always returns false. So in our second test, we're checking whether the zero zero move is legal, and of course it's false because it's always false. Uh, but in the first test, we want to know whether it's true, and it isn't true, so that one fails. 
So now our next step is to do the minimum amount possible to make these tests pass. Right now, placing a letter does absolutely nothing. What we're going to do is we are going to create an array to store the letters. Var grid equals, and it's actually, it's going to be an array of arrays. We're going to initialize it with three arrays, all of which are going to have the empty string three times because there's no letters in the grid at the beginning. Um, and it may be a little bit easier to see the grid if we put it like this. So each of these represents one row, and then the index within that row is the column, which means when we place a letter at a position, we are going to modify grid. So the first number of the position is the row. So grid index position dot x, and then second, we modify position dot y. Or no, wait, actually, it's the other way around, isn't it? Because, yeah, because each of these is a row. So the y component of the vector tells you which row. So actually, it should be grid position dot y position dot x. And then we're going to set that equal to the letter. Um, and then if when we're checking whether a move is legal, we are going to check whether the grid at that position is currently empty or is occupied by a letter. Um, so return letter at position is equal to grid. Same thing again, position dot y, position dot x. If the letter at the position is equal to the empty string, then the move is legal. Otherwise, it is not legal. So let's go back to our test and run this. It passes. Um, both of these are working properly, which is great. Now we have some confidence that our game state class is doing what we want it to do. So let's see about this get winner method next. So get winner is supposed to tell us whether X is winning or O is winning, or if no one's winning, then uh, I suppose it should probably return. Let's have it return the empty string. The next thing we do is we write a new test describing how we want that method to behave. So func, let's call it uh, test is winner should return empty string for new board. So at the start of the game, there should not be a winner. So game state is game state dot new. We're going to assert that the string that we get when we do game state dot get winner, and we're going to assert that the string is empty. And it should not come to, as a surprise to you that if we run this test, it passes because of course we are returning the empty string. So let's do something a little bit more exciting. Uh, let's say test is winner should return player with three in a row. And by row, I mean literally a row. Let's create a new game. And what we're going to do here is we are going to place a letter at vector2.0. Um, so that's the, the upper left corner, um, vector2.1 the upper middle tile of the board. Well, yeah, maybe for clarity, let's just let's just put the actual coordinates here. 0, 0, 1, 0, and 2, 0. And our expectation here is that the winner should be O, is equal to O. So let's run that. So as expected, that failed. Um, let's also create, as long as we're here, let's create tests for columns and diagonals. Um, and of course, uh, for a column, we're going to do 0, 1, and 0, 2. And then we're going to say 3 in a diagonal. So that's 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. And then we run the tests, and we see that uh, naturally these ones also fail. So let's go into game state and make them pass. So for our get winner function, um, I think there are sort of two parts to this. Uh, first of all, if we retrieve a list of every row, column, and diagonal. And then we have a separate function that takes in a row, column, or diagonal, a, an array of three strings, and returns the string that's in all three if just one string is in all three and otherwise returns the empty string. So let's create some helper functions. So these we are not going to be unit testing because they're part of get winner. We don't actually care how get winner works under the hood from the perspective of the tests, just that it does. So let's say get rows is going to be an array of arrays. And I mean, this one is just the grid, literally. Turn grid 
Um, then we'll have get columns. So for this one, we want uh, the first item of each row, the second item of each row, and the third item of each row. Let's say output equals an empty array for index in range three. So column equals grid zero idx, grid one index, grid two index. And then we will append that to the output. So output.append column. And then we just return output. Um, and then diagonals, I suppose we may as well just hard code that. So get diagonals. So for the diagonals, we're just going to return grid 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2, and then 0, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 0. So then we'll take a function that takes in um, an array of three strings. And uh, if all those strings are the same, it'll return that string. Um, otherwise, it will return, say, the empty string. We'll call it get common string. The input is an array of strings. And this will return a string. Now, we're assuming that the array has three strings in it. So let's say uh, first string equals array zero. Um, this is not going to be a very elegant function, but we know already that the array is of size three, so that's going to make things pretty simple. If array one is equal to first string and array two is equal to first string, then we will return the first string. That's the one that's in common. And otherwise, we're just going to return the empty string. So we're going to iterate over all the rows, columns, and diagonals here. Uh, we'll call them triples. So triples equals get rows plus get columns plus get diagonals. And then uh, the instant we see a winner, um, we're going to return that winner. For triple in triples, common string equals get common string of the triple. If it isn't the empty string, then somebody's one, and we return it. And then if uh, we haven't returned by this point, um, we just return the empty string. So let's give that a try. And we have an error. Let's uh, debug tests. All right, let's see, trying to return an, arra an array of type array when the expected return type is array of arrays. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what's going wrong here. Um, for now, I think I will just loosen up the static typing a bit. So we'll just say that these are arrays without going into um, the typing of the array. And uh, hopefully that should fix the problem. Yes, okay, all right. Let's, let's just not use the array of strings, array of array. We won't be that specific. We'll just say it's an array. All of our tests passed. One of the great things about unit testing is we can verify that all of the game logic works even though we don't yet actually have any scenes to interact with. 